All right guys, so in this video we're gonna be talking about the five top benefits of ginger root, as well as how to properly dose it and some of the side effects that are associated with ginger root. So let's dive right in. Hey guys, welcome to Nutrition Library where we take an evidence and wellness-based approach to supplementation and nutrition. If you haven't already, do me a huge favor and hit the red subscribe button uh, that's below this video so that you can stay up to date with all of our future content. Thank you so much. So again, guys, we're going to be talking about the top five health benefits that are associated with ginger root as well as the mechanisms of actions that are associated with how ginger root interacts with the body on uh, kind of like a biochemical level. So if you guys are interested in that, you're definitely going to enjoy this video a lot. But with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the first health benefit that's associated with ginger root intake, and that is improved digestion. Now, this definitely seems to be the number one kind of historical use of ginger root is to improve digestion. But recent research has also shown that it is uh, fairly potent at improving nausea, improving gastric emptying, reducing colon cancer risk, increasing gut motility, as well as possibly improving postprandial blood sugar. Now, again, this does seem to be the most historical use of ginger root, and the mechanisms here seem to be um, really one primary mechanism, and that is ginger has the ability to uh, block a sp very specific serotonin receptor in the gut um, known as the 5-HT3 receptor, which again is a very specific receptor uh, for serotonin and when this receptor is um, activated by serotonin after a meal um, it does a handful of things now the primary thing that happens once this uh, receptor is activated is that it slows the release of insulin which then subsequently kind of behind that mechanism ends up increasing blood sugar decreases gut motility as well as uh, decreasing hunger as well so when you block this receptor, it uh, kind of blocks serotonin's ability after a meal to uh, bind to this receptor. And so through this mechanism, ginger is able to increase insulin response, which uh, may or may not be a good thing depending on who you are specifically, but in a generally uh, healthy population, when you increase the insulin response after a meal, it's going to help uh, reduce blood sugar uh, by up to 35% in some rat studies, which definitely is going to be a good thing. And so when this receptor is blocked by ginger, it's going to one, increase that insulin response after a meal, two, decrease the blood sugar uh, spike that happens after a meal, as well as speed up uh, gut motility. Now, another health benefit when it comes to gut health of ginger is that it also uh, seems to be fairly potent at reducing gut inflammation as well, which is why ginger root seems to be one of the primary uh, kind of go-to supplements for anyone that's trying uh, to improve digestion. Now, the second health benefit associated with ginger intake is it also seems to be fairly potent at reducing inflammation. Now, ginger root has been shown to be fairly consistent at improving inflammatory markers, reducing muscle soreness, and reducing symptoms of osteoarthritis. Now, the mechanism here is super interesting in that it seems to be fairly similar to a couple of other compounds like uh, curcumin, aspirin, and even ibuprofen in that it inhibits an enzyme known as the Cox enzyme. Now, this enzyme is super involved in the production of pro-inflammatory cytokines and prostaglandins. And so when you're able to block the activity of this uh, specific specific enzyme, it also slows and decreases um, the activity of pro-inflammatory prostaglandins and cytokines. Now, again, because it does seem to be fairly consistent at doing this in several different populations, I believe ginger to be one of the most potent natural anti-inflammatories uh, that really exists. Now, the third possible health benefit that's associated with ginger intake um, is that it also seems to improve hormone function. Now, specifically, ginger has been shown to increase testosterone, uh, increase luteinizing hormone, increase follicle stimulating hormone, increase sperm count, and sperm quality. Now, all of these were tested in one specific study, and I will say that this study was 
pretty crappy, uh, to be quite frank. For whatever reason, I have no idea why whoever conducted the study didn't disclose the amount of ginger that was used in the study. However, the good thing to note here is that there are a handful of rodent studies as well that back up um, this specific benefit. And so even though uh, the human data is super preliminary right now, it is worth noting that there are a handful of rodent trials that back up uh, this health benefit. Now, the mechanism here isn't super clear. It's probably a handful of different things. There's probably some specific testicular antioxidant activity of ginger that helps kind of uh, the, the production of uh, male sex hormones. But it's also also probably safe to say that there's also some specific activity on the HPG axis just because of its stimulatory effect on both luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone which are pituitary hormones uh, that get released and have activity specifically on the testicles and so there does seem to be kind of some stimulatory effect in the brain in stimulating the pituitary gland to uh, secrete those hormones which then again subsequently has an effect um, on on the testes. Now, it's also probably important to note here that ginger also has some fairly strong uh, phytoestrogenic activity, which it hasn't necessarily been shown to be either pro-estrogenic or anti-estrogenic. Uh, there is just some kind of in vitro studies right now at the moment uh, that do show that it has some slight um, estrogenic activity to it as well. But with everything considered, I do believe uh, ginger to be a fairly promising and fairly potent um, hormone regulator in both men and women. Now, the fourth health benefit that's associated with ginger intake is improvements in cognition. Now, specifically, ginger has been shown to improve working memory, increase accuracy and speed in a word recognition test, and improve reaction time. Now, it is important to note here that the evidence is kind of very preliminary right now, and the human data that we do have, um, again, has only been performed in post menopausal women. And because of ginger's possible pro-estrogenic effects, again, that hasn't even been established yet, but because of its possible effects, there is a possibility that the pro-cognitive effects of ginger are associated with stimulating the estrogen receptor in women that don't have a lot of estrogen. But again, because of its anti-inflammatory effects and its possible effects on even some neurotransmitters and its stimulatory effects, it is possible that that these results would carry over into other populations, but again, the data just is not clear right now at this moment. Now, again, the mechanisms here aren't super clear, but it does seem that ginger is uh, somewhat potent at reducing neural inflammation, which uh, would carry over into healthy populations and possibly increase cognition. And ginger does seem to have some slight stimulatory effects, and so there probably is some interactions with some neurotransmitters, but again, there isn't any data right now, so we just don't really know. Now, the fifth possible health benefit um, is Ginger's ability to improve just what I would call general health. And now, specifically, it has been shown to reduce cholesterol, improve antioxidant profile, and reduce triglyceride levels. And now, because the mechanisms here are probably fairly complicated and aren't really well established in the research yet, I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on this right now, but I always like to kind of throw this in there whenever I'm doing um, a review on a supplement, just so you guys are aware of all of the health benefits that are associated with specific compounds, um, because I do think it is super important whenever you are developing a supplemental stack or adding something into your diet uh, that you know everything about that compound. Um, and when you're going to be spending money on something, it's always going to be helpful to purchase something that has um, several health benefits, not just one acute benefit. And it does seem that ginger is one of those compounds. Now, when it comes to dosage, it does appear that the typical dosage is recommended to be between one and three grams. But it also appears that even up to 10 to 15 grams of the dry root powder can be uh, tolerable. However, when you get into those higher dosage range, um, the, the risk of kind of 
um, intestinal burning, so to speak. Like anyone who's ever had ginger knows that it's kind of used as a spice and has a, a spiciness to it. And so when you consume super large quantities of ginger, there is a possible side effect um, of that intestinal burning and kind of like having the feeling of heartburn. And so um, that is really one of the only side effects to really look out for now because of ginger's ability to inhibit that coox enzyme. There is a possibility of it interacting negatively with some pharmaceuticals. So if you are taking some drugs, I would check with your doctor before taking this. However, uh, ginger does seem to be a fairly safe compound. And so now I am a fairly big fan of ginger. I do not take it every day. I did just release a video last week, um, which I'm not sure when this video is gonna be coming out, but regardless, my previous video that I kind of walked through my own personal supplement stack that I'm actually in the kind of the process of, of honing down and kind of simplifying a little bit. Uh, but ginger root is not something I take every day simply because I kind of look at it as somewhat of a medicinal compound. And so I'll take ginger root in, uh, in medium to high doses whenever I have a super brutal workout where I get super sore, or if I've got something like a headache, or if I'm gonna be eating a large carby meal in the middle of the day that's going to spike my blood sugar and make me just want to take a nap. I'll take a bunch of ginger if, if that happens just to kind of starve off that, that insulin spike and that blood sugar spike that ends up happening after a large meal in the middle of the day. But other than that, guys, that's pretty much all I have for you today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you have any questions about this supplement or any recommendations on a supplement that you would like for me to review, please leave a comment down below. I try to get back to uh, pretty much most of you guys. And also, if you are interested in other compounds that can be used in order to improve hormone profiles, specifically in men, I've got a complete write-up um, of all of the compounds that I personally use and all of the possible compounds that you could use in order to improve uh, hormone profiles. So if you are interested in that, check out the description down below and you can find a link for that. But other than that, guys, I will see you guys next time.